is to introduce our guest expert speaker for the, for the night, or what we're here for. Uh, what I like to do when it comes to introducing our expert speaker is to read their profile so you have a real um, thorough idea of who's speaking to us tonight and why they're qualified to give us the information and advice that they, they're going to deliver. So I'd like to introduce Rob. Rob has over 30 years experience as a finance accounting and tax specialist, both in the corporate world and, and, and in practice and, and is a qualified accountant as well as a portfolio landlord himself. He has a unique breadth of experience encompassing senior finance roles up to and including board level with multinational organizations including DHL, Booker Tate, Whitbread and the Dixon Retail Group. Rob is also very experienced in the private practice working with property owners and landlords, as well as, as, well as owner-managed businesses. Since 2014, he has owned and operated his own accountancy and tax practice. Rob is also a portfolio landlord himself, owning and operating a number of residential properties, both in his own name and through a limited company. Pers I personally and professionally am honored to say that Rob has been a landlord a VA landlord for over 10, 10 12 years with VA now um, and it's been a great pleasure working with him so with no further ado I would like to hand over and introduce our VA guest speaker of the night Robert Glover over to you thank you very much Vanessa and uh, good evening to everybody um, nice to see uh, a few familiar names on the um, in the audience and um, a couple of familiar faces but thank you everybody for taking the time to uh, to watch this um just just to build slightly on the, the intro that um that Vanessa gave me um um I, I am originally from Dunstable which is right next door to Luton and I know there's a bit, bit of a Luton center of gravity on among among the audience um I lived in Luton for about 10 years and um I must admit I've always found it a good location for for buy buy to let so I think mainly because of the the um kind of London wave effect when when London gets really hot you you, you know that uh, that that Luton's going to follow shortly afterwards so to have been able to buy at, at the at the front of that um wave a, a, a few times um but um uh, yeah VA um I, and I promise you I'm not being paid to say this uh VA I've, I've always used them I think since pretty much VA first started um always had uh, good experiences frankly and um as as those of you who know Vanessa will know that she's very much a people person and I think that's uh, replicated with the people she recruits so um uh you, you know the, the the staff have pretty much always been very friendly and helpful and um and easy to deal with so uh that said um let's push on onto the uh, the main uh, subject of the evening um and um, I'll just explain briefly how, how we're going to do this. So rather than you all sitting there for an hour or whatever it is listening to me drone on, uh, we're going to try and make it a little bit more conversational. And it's almost going to be like a role play whereby um, Vanessa takes the role of a landlord who goes to an accountant to get some advice. And um, funnily enough, I'm going to be the accountant. And um, so each each section on the agenda um, Vanessa is going to introduce with a uh, with, with a question, and Vanessa uh, will will interrupt as uh, as I go with anything that she feels um, needs clarifying or, or needs needs building on. Um, and obviously, trying to you know not to take up uh, all of everybody's evening at the same time. Try try and uh, keep it keep it moving along. So. Oh, so uh, without further ado, uh, Vanessa, would you like to um, kick us off with the uh, with, with the first question? Yeah, absolutely. And before I before I do that, I just wanted to say, please do stay to the end. Um, the information is going to be great. And we also have um, a bit of privilege offer that we'd like to drop at the end when Rob's finished. Um, so please do stay and hang on for that. So we'll give you some more information just as soon as we finish delivering the information for tonight. So obviously, I'm the, land I'm the landlord here. And um, Rob, in terms of the best way to record the income and the expenditure of my, my property business, I get really confused. I'm never really sure, should I be putting an Excel sheet, spreadsheet together? I've got online, there's lots of property tax offers that keep saying they're free and I should use those. 
support my income and my extended child. You know, what would you recommend? What should I do? Because at the moment, I'm pulling my hair out trying to figure out the best way to get this information presented correctly. Um, okay, well, thanks for that, Vanessa. Before going any further, I just need to share my screen. Right, so to um, uh, quickly run through the contents, which I should have done before Vanessa asked the, the, the question, um, just briefly, so what we're going to do, uh, firstly, in response to Vanessa's first question, talk about record keeping, you know, how to make the process easier for yourselves, um, go through briefly what can be claimed um, with a particular emphasis on financing costs. Um, then we'll move on to making tax digital um, and section 24, which you may not know as section 24, but I'm sure everyone will know about the uh, restrictions um, uh, on claiming tax relief on, on interest costs, um, which is what that is. Um, and then we come on to limited company. Is that a good thing or is it a bad thing? Um, and how do you how do you transition? Um, and then um, to, to finish, we'll just talk about um, what do I do if I've never declared any tax on my property rentals for a number of years and I'm getting a bit worried about it? Um, how do I do it without uh, getting into a, a lot of trouble? So we'll um, we'll just just finish on 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 that. Um, okay, so moving on, right. So so here we go. In in terms of um, the process, making things simple for yourself to to work out the numbers. Um, I think the first rule is to have a separate bank account for everything to do with your your property and and just use the account for that. Um, and anything you pay pay out of that account, all the income go into that account. Um, it's amazing how many uh, people I come across who have everything mixed up in their personal accounts and and that creates a big headache for them going through everything once a year and picking out the relevant things. Um, much easier if you keep it all separate and, and then it's easy. And, um, uh, you know, you can just download um, uh, a bank statement uh, onto a spreadsheet um, and uh, summarise that by transaction type, which then lends itself to preparing a profit and loss account or, or just um, feeding the numbers uh, into your tax return. Um, and the second one is try and avoid using cash. Um, I know that all contractors like to have cash. We all know that. Um, but um, if you do have to use cash, then draw it out, of, draw the exact amount out of the um, uh, separate bank account and uh, make a note of what it's for. Um, because I guarantee otherwise, by the end of the year, you'll have forgotten. Um, it's, uh, it's hard not to. Um, and then, as I say, just summarise the transactions by type and then you can calculate the totals for the year. And as you can see with a little example on the right, um, that brings you down to, to a profit figure. And uh, when you uh, transfer those figures onto your tax return, um, it, should, um, it should agree back to that. Um, so um, just really to summarize, don't, don't rely on that. And, um, you know, bags full of receipts at the end of the year, you'll miss stuff, you'll lose stuff. Um, just try and uh, try and do it through a bank account and through a separate bank account. OK, got it. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Um, in terms of my costs, Rob, what costs can I offset against my property income when I'm submitting my tax return? You know, what can I claim for? Because I'm. Um, I've got so many things that I've done on the property and it does get confusing as to what is um, allowed and what's not. Can you explain further on that? I can indeed, yeah. Um, so I think the general rule um, for what you can claim is that um, it has to be wholly and exclusively um, related to the business of renting a property. Um, and so that's the general rule. And within that general rule, um, apart from a few specific areas where there is specific um, uh, guidance, um, then you know expenses are allowable. And and I've put in in the blue boxes here some of the some of the common ones which 
uh, most people would be aware of, you know, legal and professional fees, service charges and ground rent, repairs and maintenance, agents fees, uh, any services provided, accountancy fees, uh, utilities and insurance. Um, and the, the, the two at the bottom in yellow, which um, aren't perhaps so well known, um, firstly, if, if you decide to install an electric charging point at the property, then you can claim the whole of the cost of, of that. Um, it's probably not somebody, uh, not something that a lot of people are doing at the moment, but uh, in some areas it may be a useful thing to do. Um, and um, it'll probably be, uh, become more and more common, you know, as we transition towards electric vehicles. And the other one is, is accommodation and subsistence. Um, you can claim the costs of travel to and from your property, you know, in the course of in the course of managing it, um, and um, that that can either be public transport cost or or if if you use your own vehicle to get there, just record the mileage and then you can claim that at forty five p a mile um, at the end of at the end of the year. Um, you do need to record all of those journeys though. Um, so uh, make sure you do that. And then subsistence. So if, if say, you've got a property the other end of the country um, and you go up there, you stay over, you need to have meals and so forth, um, all, all of that's claimable as, as well. Um, if you've got one the other side of town, then um, you, you can't really do that. But um, uh, as I say, if you've got one that's any distance away, then that's something that, uh, that you can claim. Um, okay. And can um, I claim, can I, sorry, Rob, can I claim, Bob, because I read somewhere, and I think this sometimes is a bit confusing, I read somewhere that, um, what if I did like a complete upgrade to my property because it needed it, it was, you know, it's become very, very tired, so I put in a brand new kitchen, brand new bathroom, new double glazing, can I, can I claim all of that under repairs and maintenance, because I thought I read somewhere that if you're doing um upgrades and things like that to your property, which is termed as sort of better in the property that is not completely tax deductible so how true is that um it, well, it's, it's not deductible against income tax so um the, the the short answer is you can claim most of it either as a deduction against income tax or as part of the capital cost which when you sold the property um you could claim um, against the capital gains tax payable on, on the sale of the property. So, so anything that amounts to um, structural improvements um, would be deemed to be, you know, capital in, in nature and therefore would be um, added to the, the cost of the property um, for future relief um, when you sell it under capital gains tax. Anything which is... Um, which which doesn't constitute a significant upgrading in in the in the value of the property, um, or not even the value, but uh, in in the, the the structure of of the property and the fabric of it, um, can be claimed under repairs and maintenance. Um, um, you know, the the costs of of getting a, a property ready for um, for habitation or for letting are are, are allowable. Um, there are a couple of things which you can't claim, um, but um, for the for the most part, part you can. Um, and, and an interesting one um, is furniture. One thing which um, I didn't highlight when, uh, well, on on, on the previous slide um, actually, um, is um, furniture replacement. So so if if you buy um, new furniture. Um, that can't be claimed. However, when you replace it, the cost of that can be. So that's a bit of a bit of a strange one. Um, but um, yeah, ho hopefully that um, that answers the the question. Okay, thank you. So um, I can claim for my whole new kitchen then, my ten thousand pounds new kitchen. I can get it off. Um, it, well, it, it depends. I mean, if it's um, if it's modernising a, a kitchen um, in a property that that uh, you already own, then then yes, um, if it's if it's putting in a in a kitchen um, in a in an empty shell that uh, that you buy, then that's probably more likely to be a capital item. It's it's it, it is it is still a little little bit of a grey area, but um, 
the, 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 the general principles involved. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Okay, so um, the the odd the oddball um, nowadays um, is is finance costs. So as as um, most you probably know, um, since uh, well since two thousand seventeen when it was first uh, phased in, um, finance costs um, is not um, a deduction uh, against um, rental income. Uh, anymore in the way that the other expenses we've been talking about is and instead your profits calculated without that um, and you get a 20 percent um 20 percent of the finance costs um are then offset against the amount of tax payable uh when everything else is is considered um and no no we'll go back to that um in in a few minutes when we talk about section 24, but I really just wanted to highlight here that um, finance costs don't just include mortgage interest, they also include refinancing costs. So um, arrangement fees when you remortgage, um, typically they'll get added onto your mortgage and, and, and you won't actually pay for them until you repay the mortgage. Um, that's something that gets overlooked an awful lot. And they can be claimed um, as part of finance costs through your tax return. Um, and given how significant they can be these days, I mean, I've remortgaged um, somewhere recently, and and uh, some of the some of the mortgage officers I was looking at, you know, that uh, up to five grand um, arrangement fees. So it's it's really important to pick them up. Um, and then you know any other costs associated with the refinancing, for example, brokers fees legal fees and um, survey or valuation fees. That's that's all part of, of financing costs, um, which uh, you can get the 20% tax reduction on. Um, it, it is limited, and without going through the, the, the bottom part of this slide in, in a lot of detail, it, it essentially what you can't do is um, use finance financing costs to um, put yourself in a situation where you get a tax refund. Um, and, and so this this is how they do it by limiting it to the lower of these three things: total finance costs, your property profits, or your um, uh, adjusted total income. You, essentially, your taxable income after your personal allowances and any and any um, unearned income. Um, but anything that 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 you can't use during the year because of this limitation can get carried forward, and then you can claim it in future years. Again, subject to this annual. Um, test um okay. so yeah do you want to is that okay yeah, Vanessa? yeah that's fine that's, um, that's understood to... yeah that's understood so another thing that i've heard rob is that landlords are going to have to start submitting their tax quarterly can you tell us more about that how true is that because i mean we find it a bit of a challenge you know doing the annual self-assessment return so quarterly is going to be quite a ticket for busy you know busy landlords like myself and everybody else so what, what what's happening there um yeah well that's a very very good point and i'm um that's better um that's a very very good point so um what this is part of something called making tax digital which is um a government initiative to require taxpayers to keep digital records and provide more frequent tax returns. And I think originally, you know, somebody in, in Whitehall had this great vision that um, everything would be self-populating um, from, you know, big data. Um, there'd be feeds coming in from, from your banks. There'd be feeds coming in from here, there and everywhere. And then uh, all that we had to do, all, all that we would have to do as taxpayers is go on a screen, make a couple of tweaks, um, and press a button every quarter. Lovely vision, but in reality, we're miles and miles away from that. And uh, you know, some might argue it's it's totally unrealistic in the foreseeable future. Um, and this uh, initiative um, has been uh, its implementation has been delayed and delayed and delayed um, over I don't know how many years, quite a quite a few. Um, it is it is in place now for VAT, um, but the income tax part of it um, has still been um, kicked down. You know the can's been kicked down the road a bit, 
Um, and at the moment, um, the plan is to introduce it from April 26, uh, just over two years time, for landlords um, whose revenue is above 50 grand. And the revenue is actually your rents received before deducting any expenses. Um, so that, that that's going to catch a lot of people. Uh, and then after that, a year later, um, the plan is to um, reduce that 50 grand threshold to 30 grand. Um, now, you know, whether or not it'll it'll get um, postponed further is a matter of um, conjecture. Um, I, I I would like to think that it will, but we can't be we can't be confident of that. And it's worth just being aware of you know the implications of of that. Um, so what what it normally means is that you you'll need to use accounting software um, to you know record your expenses and submit your returns. Um, or um, uh, there, there's you know what we call bridging software in, in place, which which we we as accountants use, um, where you can link to spreadsheets. So 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 effectively, that's that's a bit of a it kind of defeats the whole objective of having online digital records because you can continue to have your you carry a bag full of receipts and uh, and give them to your accountant, not me, please, <laughs> but uh, whoever you use, and um, and your accounts can be put onto a spreadsheet, and and then they can be uploaded via what they call bridging software into the HMRC system. But for the most part, um, it means you need to use um, accounting software, um, and you know I've just put a few um examples on on the screen here you know zero and quickbooks which um are the pro probably the two um market leaders in uh, small business accounting software um and then there's some specific landlord ones there's one called landlord vision and and, and there's some others which um a lot of them can do other things they're about portfolio management um as well as the the tax side of it um so yeah, that's what's coming up. And as uh, Vanessa said, um, once it does come in, then it means quarterly returns. It's not gonna be a full um, detailed tax return like you do at the end of the year, um, but um, uh, at least as far as we know, it's, it's not. It's, it's, uh, um, but uh, you know, it, it will involve, um, you know, some work um, and it will involve uh, making sure you're up to date um, and, uh, and and making the, the submission in whatever form okay. every quarter. Okay. We All look right. forward. We look we look forward to making tax digital then, eh? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think the other question that's on my mind as a landlord and a lot of landlords here is asking, can you explain a bit more? about the rules that are coming that are that are coming in in regards to claiming mortgage interest and other such costs for our tax deduction. Yeah. Um so um so, so we, we we touched on it a little, a little bit earlier um the, the rules um for um uh, claiming financing costs now um and it is specifically uh for residential lettings um in um, privately held properties. So this is why limited companies have got very popular lately because with a company, this doesn't apply. You can still, um, you can still claim full relief on, on the finance costs if, if it's done through a company. Um, but it is quite an insidious measure as I'll attempt to, to explain. Um, so, um, as I said, the twenty percent tax relief is is given only after your tax bill has been calculated, um, and uh, what it means is that um, you know your 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 higher profits without the the finance uh, relief get included in your total taxable income, which um, very often um, push people into the higher rate tax threshold, which they wouldn't otherwise be in. Uh, so before I go too far into that. One thing I should say um, is that is that if you do uh, serviced accommodation um, or commercial property, this doesn't apply either. It's not not just if you do it through a company. If you do 
uh, those two types of letting, um, they're not included because they're deemed to be they're deemed to be commercial um, rather than uh, residential. In fact, serviced accommodation is um, doesn't even come under the. Uh, and, uh, Vanessa will correct me if I'm if I'm slightly wrong on on this, but as, as far as I'm aware, it doesn't come under the tenancy regulations because your 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 occupants are guests rather than tenants. So it's a, a different ball game. Um, but yeah, just the, the the key point here is about the potential effects. So as I've said, um, it pushes um, a huge number of people into the forty percent tax bracket, uh, which they wouldn't otherwise be in. And um, and if that happens, then if you're claiming child benefit, then you start to lose that um, at income levels of above fifty grand. Um, and and there are some examples here of other benefits which you lose. For example. Um, if you're a basic rate taxpayer, you can receive up to a thousand pounds worth of of bank interest or other interest a year tax free. Um, it's only five hundred um, once uh, you're in the higher rate um, tax bracket, and if you're in the the upper rate, the forty five percent tax bracket, it disappears altogether. Um, and uh, lots of tax free personal allowance. So if so, if your taxable income on the new calculation goes above 100,000, um, then you start to lose your personal allowances, which gives you an effective tax rate of 60%, um, which um, you don't hear um, too many uh, government ministers talk about when, when you hear them on the on the TV. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Um, now this is going to go the wrong way again. Um, that's better. Um, yeah, and, and again, um, a few, um, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, so, so tax credits can be affected as well. Um, capital gains tax rate uh, is dependent on whether you're a basic or a high rate taxpayer. So, you know, if you're selling a property or selling shares or anything that's subject to capital gains tax, you can end up paying a higher rate than you would do um, with, without Section 24. Um if you're earning, you know, over about 150 grand um, in total, it can um, push you into push you to the point where um, the amount you can put into a pension scheme each year is is lower. Um, you can lose you know, the 1260 marriage allowance at the other end of the earning scale. It affects student loan repayments as well. So um, you, you know there are all these effects <clears throat> which. Um, aren't um aren't obvious from from the headlines about this measure so um it is quite an insidious one um yeah so does that answer that one it Vanessa? does it does it, it does indeed it does shed some light on that for us thank you and what about rob um renting a property through a limited company as opposed to renting it as an individual, what is better? What is more tax efficient for me? Because I'm still very confused on which way to go with my portfolio. Okay, um, I think you you and um, many thousands of others, um, Vanessa, because the, the truth is, um, it depends. <laughs> and uh, and it's it, the, and there's not, not a simple answer, unfortunately, for, for everybody. Um, so, as I said earlier, um, one of the very attractive things about using a limited company is that your finance costs are fully allowable. Um, and um, that's what's driving a lot of people to, to looking into doing, doing this. Um, and um, so if, if you have a company, the, the company, it's important to understand that the company is a separate legal en entity. It's taxed separately. Um, and you're also subject to personal tax on anything that you draw out of that company by way of salary or dividends. Um, so the corporation tax rate um, will be either 19%, 25%, or, or, or there's actually a transitional rate, which is equivalent to 26.5% in between those two. Um, so, you know, on the face of it, um, if you're... A high rate taxpayer that's lower than paying high rate tax, but 
as long as you don't draw any money out and pay yourself through salaries or dividends where you'll add um you know either 40 or um 33 uh, and three quarter percent uh to that corporation tax burden which obviously doesn't work so so what what people do um is um they draw upon the amount that they've put in the company uh to finance the deposit on the property so um to illustrate that so if, if you buy a property for 100 grand uh keep the numbers simple you borrow 75 grand through the company as a mortgage and you have to pay 25 grand into the company to then um, pay the deposit on the property so that 25 grand in the company's accounts is treated as a loan from you to the company the company can then pay you back uh, it can even pay you interest on on that loan um, uh, which is tax allowable to the company um, and it can pay you back um, when the cash is available which is income to you which you don't pay personal tax on what you're actually doing is is living off your capital um so it's not it's not a, a, a kind of free um free lunch so to speak uh, but that's 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 what people do and that's that's how people make it work um and and I, I'm not a I'm not an inheritance tax expert. It's not uh, it's, it's, it's the, the the one tax that I don't uh, cover. But it can potentially take properties out of um, out of inheritance tax. So if, so if you want to do it for that reason, um, it would be worth um, uh, getting some specific inheritance tax advice on it. Um, so. Um, what are the disadvantages? Um, well, the, the big, big one is it doesn't normally work for existing properties um, because um, when you transfer a property from yourself to a company, um, it's treated as a sale um, and it's treated as a sale at market value. Uh, whether or not, um, uh, wh wh whether um, whether or not that's you know that there's any cash uh, changes hands it is treated as a sale at market value and uh, stamp duty is payable by by the company and capital gains tax is payable by by you as an individual um, and there are other complications for example the mortgages is a big one you know they're not transferable um all the you know, deeds and land registry documents need to be changed. So there's there's a lot of practical implications to do it. Um, and and the other thing is um, uh, interest rates and the cost of purchasing are um, considerably higher for for companies. Um, there's quite a lot of mortgage companies uh, seem to be doing um, buy to let mortgages for companies now and. Um, the, the margin between the interest rates they charge um, and what they would if you were an individual are, are less than they were a little while ago, but um, they're still um, they're, they're still they're still a, a, a noticeably higher, and the purchase costs are much higher um, uh, in terms of legal fees and and, and so forth. Um, so um, the, they're um, some of the disadvantages. Um, and so, um, I mean, what what I personally do uh, is I've I've got some um, properties which I've had for for a while in in my my own name, and and they're just just leaving me. I, I've, I've uh, they're just sitting there. Um, I I've, I've bought a couple since, which I've bought through a company, and um, uh, and it's just a case of managing the situation o over time, if if possible, try and manage your mortgage. Um, levels down uh, with the ones you own personally um, or hope that the rules change but that's probably a bit of a forlorn hope at the moment um, um, now um, beware of snake oil salesmen there are companies out there the two main ones you'll see on the right less tax for landlords and property 118 who um, have got some very or had uh, very publicized, well publicized schemes to get round a lot of these obstacles, um, and um, 
I won't go into all the all the technical details here because it is it's a very very technical area. Um, but um, suffice it to say that um, they uh, promised the Earth you know, that they claim to have you know specialist barristers, probably did have specialist barristers and have specialist barristers whose opinion it was that their schemes um, um, would work. Um, and um, essentially what what that they were doing um, was um, using using the tax rules um, in a way that they weren't intended, which which gets caught under something called the the uh, gen, general anti avoidance provisions in 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 the tax world, um, and, um, and and a lot of people signed up to these schemes, and and, and they they were charging a lot of money. I mean, it would cost you. You know, certainly north of ten thousand to do it. Um, probably north of twenty thousand in most cases, um, and um, you know, quite elaborate um, schemes. Um, and what's happened recently is that HMRC have started to um, to to uh, catch up um, with with these companies. In the case of um, less tax for landlords. Um, HMRC has has challenged it and is, is now starting to write to the clients of less tax for landlords, uh, asking them to disclose any underlying property revenue sitting behind these schemes. And so a lot of people who have done this in you know in, in good faith um, are going to get uh, are going to get caught and um, and uh, you know they'll they'll end up with a big tax bill to pay uh, potentially and um, and quite uh, quite probably penalties as well um property 118 is 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 another one who um sorry less tax tax for landlords i think in response this have now stopped offering these um schemes and have stopped taking on new new clients i'm not sure the property 118 have um they've been they've been fighting on um and i think the particular um area where um they they have exposed the vulnerabilities is that um they they um they came up with a methodology um for doing this without transferring your your mortgages but by using a, a trust uh, structure um uh which is which is in in breach of of the mortgage deeds um or it's is claimed claimed that it is that's that's the battle going on um anyone who's particularly interested in this um in this area um uh might be interested in following a guy called dan needle on linkedin is it's either ni any idl or niedl and he's he's been um uh fighting these companies um for a while and and there's there's a there's a lot of good stuff um on there for those who, who are interested in the um in in the uh, the more technical side of it um so i think um the uh, the upshot of all, all of that is um you know just just tread very carefully um and uh in my view in uh, in, in most cases um uh, in nearly every case actually it's it's not um it's not advisable to try and transfer existing um properties unless there are there are other reasons for for, for doing so Okay, thanks, Rob. I think that name, less tax for landlords, is one that you know. If you were going to start a business, why would you call it that? You know, HMRC wouldn't wouldn't like that. They'll be on your case straight away. Yeah, it does. It does kind of attract uh, the wrong sort of attention. <laughs> Not it? clever. Not clever. Um, I have a question here. The question that I have here is actually not. Um, about myself because I'm very super organised on, on these things, uh, but more on behalf of a friend. So I have a friend who owns a couple of properties. I think they've had them for about four or five years, and for whatever reason, they've never ever disclosed the properties on a tax return to HMRC. They've never never paid any tax. Um, basically, they haven't done anything, um, and they're a little bit worried now. They've had a couple of letters actually. And, they're a little bit worried about what they do, given that they've had these properties for about five years, never done a tax return. What do they do now if they were to come clean to HMRC? You know, what would be the consequences? Would they be fined heavily? Would they have to go back to the beginning? 
So could you give me a little bit of advice for one of my landlord friends, please? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, I mean, I think it is, it's right to be worried um, because uh, HMRC say, say are getting data feeds from all over the place now, um, from, um, you know, uh, from, from buy-to-let lenders, for example, and, and, and other places, and um, are um, uh, sending out a lot of, lot of letters to... Um, to landlords um with which start with the dreaded words you know we we have reason to believe that you may have um undisclosed property income and then that kicks off a long process um whereby um you know you end up you know having to having to come clean um and uh you can get um some some fairly severe penalties for for, for doing that um you're 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 um <laughs> you're unlikely to go to jail <laughs> that's that's the first thing i mean that 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 um that 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 requires really you know willful um fraud to have taken place and for the most part people just um they they don't get around to it at first and then things drag on and then they think well you know i've got away from it so far i'll be all right and you know then they start getting Getting a bit, getting a bit more nervous um, as as things go on. Um, uh, but for for the most part, it's it's either you know carelessness um, or you know in many cases uh, people have taken reasonable care. Um, but for various um, uh, reasons, uh, haven't submitted a return, um, uh, and there are you know various um acceptable reasons or reasonable excuses um to, to use hmrc's terminology for, for doing that um just just to focus on this this table on on the slide for a little bit um the the penalties that that um that you might end up paying um depend on your behavior um and um if you show that you've taken reasonable care, um, and I'll come come back to talking about what that might mean in a minute, um, there'll be no penalty. You'll just have to pay the the, the back tax um, plus interest. Um, till recently, interest wouldn't have been that much, but of course, it's uh, it's a little bit more now. Um, if you were careless, um, then. Um, uh, oh, sorry. The other distinction I, I need to make is, is between unprompted and prompted disclosure. So, prompted disclosure is when you get the dreaded letter from HMRC. In other words, when when they catch you out. Um, whereas, if if you're proactive and you make a disclosure before they they catch you out, um, then the, the the penalties are less. Uh, so, you know, in the case of careless behaviour, you know, they can be as low as zero. Um, if if you uh, make an unprompted disclosure, or fifteen to thirty percent if it's prompted, um, <clears throat> then you know you get into the um, the grounds of you know deliberate um, um, failure to 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 disclose, um, which are significantly higher. Again, you know a bit lower if, um, if 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 you go to them first, they can be as little as twenty percent or as high as seventy percent. The percentages relate to the amount of tax owed, by the way. Um, <clears throat> or pro if prompted disclosure, it's, it's a minimum of thirty-five and up to seventy percent. And um, the, the the worst one is 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 if it's not only um, deliberate, but if 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 you try and conceal information from HMRC um, once once they get onto it, um, then um, you know. You can end up with with a hundred percent penalties um, uh, in both cases, actually. Um, so, uh, yeah, as 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 I said, so here the penalty can be reduced depending on the quality of the disclosure and the conduct. Um, so it's about telling HMRC about the errors. It's about helping HMRC work out what extra tax is due, and giving HMRC access to check the figures um, if if they ask for it. Um, so, so just just before um, wrapping up on on this one, 
Um, I, I just want to give you a couple of examples about you know reasonable care and uh, what constitutes reasonable care. And probably the biggest, um, I was going to say get out of jail free card, but uh, perhaps that's unfortunate terminology. But um, the, 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 the biggest one in recent years is COVID. Um, and COVID is almost a, you know, a, a free pass. Um, if, if, if you explain how you know, difficult things were in um, the, the, the COVID era, you know, the tax years 2021 and 21, 22, um, the effects that's that had on on you and the hardship that, that you faced then um hmrc are under instruction to um to uh to, to, to not issue a penalty for that um so um you know obviously you know one or two years down the line that's uh that, that's uh, still very relevant um and you know things are you know um if if um um what, what else is there if if you've if you had mental health issues or, or other um if, if 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 you meant to um if you meant to, to to submit a tax return but but there were there were health reasons um or other um serious personal matters which stop you from doing so um like mental health issues um like um uh, bereavement of close family members uh, and so forth um that uh that that all counts as well um so um that's uh i think the the bones of of that one any oh sorry the other thing which shows some of you're probably wondering which i didn't explain there is a thing called um the let property campaign which is an HMRC initiative to pull people um, into the tax net, uh, landlords specifically, you know, in the knowledge that there are, you know, probably tens of thousands of people out there um, who are in this situation, you know, who have who have never declared anything and should have done. So um, the uh, the penalties here are are what. Um, uh, apply to the let property campaign and if you make a disclosure under the campaign it's a, it's a formal process that you go through with hmrc um and if and if they they come to you first uh, they will they will require you to go under that um process um now you know there is a school of, of thought um that um it's it's Better not to not to use the, the let property campaign and just to write a letter um, explaining the circumstances and I have discussions with them um, the, uh, uh, the the owner of on, on the spot who, who's a fr franchise uh, that that, uh, that that I work under um, she's very much of the opinion that um, you should avoid the let property campaign you should just make a, a disclosure in the normal way because at the end of the day. Um, you're dealing with human human being God, I can't talk human beings um and um and and if you make a, a free form disclosure uh you can make it in in the way you want to and um uh, and it'll it'll land with somebody who um at the end of the day won't necessarily have time or the inclination uh to um take things much further. Um, it'll be a quick win to them, and um, there is a likelihood that uh, that they'll just just agree it. Yeah, don't don't underestimate the fact that HMRC are very very overstretched at the moment in terms of, of manpower, and anyone who's tried phoning them up uh, recently will will be painfully aware of that by the time you have to wait for somebody to answer the phone. Um, but uh, anyway, the, the the bottom line is, you know, it, it needn't be um it needn't be a disaster um uh fessing up so to speak and uh and, and making a making a, a disclosure or, or a declaration okay thank you rob just the um, last as a last thing before i um see if any of our fellow landlords have any questions that we haven't covered um can you explain a bit about so this whole cash flow thing so when we submit our self-assessment returns and we have to pay our tax fine. But then there's this element where we also have to pay 50% of the of the 
50% of the tax that we're paying, we have to pay that again immediately as a sort of like prediction of our tax for the following year. And then in July, we then have to pay another 50%. So can you sort of tell us and explain, because this does become a bit confusing, you know, what, you know, where has this come from? What is this about? And what if as a landlord, we have an issue with cash flow? Because sometimes it can be a bit difficult to put the tax that we're liable for together for whatever reason. And then on top of that, we have the 50% advance tax. Can you shed some yeah. light on this, please? Well, well uh, yeah. So, so, so firstly, let me just clarify the principles around this before I talk about the, the mechanics of it. So it's not actually paying tax in advance because if you think about it, if, if, if you're earning what you earn from renting property um, through a, you know, a, a day job through an employment, you'd be paying PAYE on it every month, um, which would be the equivalent of paying your tax every month as, as soon as you get the rental income hit your bank account. So, you know, we, we have the privilege, I suppose, of, of, of not having to do that for the most part. Um, and the payments on account system um, is HMRC's way of um, trying to get a bit closer to that, where there are significant amounts of tax to be paid. Um, and if, if you think about it, the the, the, the first 50% that will be payable this 31st of January relates to the tax year 23-24, which is almost over. So we're three quarters of the way through that tax year, and you're only just paying you know, your first six months tax. Um, i.e. for the period up to September, if you look at it that way. And the last six months, you don't have to pay till 31st of July. Um, so um, uh, that's that's the principle of it. And, and I think, you know, it, it does us all good to just remind ourselves um, that we're not actually paying in advance. Although um, if, 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 and this happens so, so often, if, if people don't have to do it year in, year out, when they have to do it for the first time, it's horrible <laughs> because, you know, none of us, none of us keep money behind for this. I say none of us, some people probably do, but the vast majority of us don't keep, keep money set aside for, for this. Um, it just comes along and, and hits us. Um, so it's, it's a shock to the system, but so, so, so the way it works. Um, so um, if, there's um if there's more than um if there's more than a thousand pounds tax due on your tax return then um you will automatically uh, be charged um payments on account for the 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 current tax year um so yeah you know, be 500 pounds payable now and 500 pounds in july um the exception to that, uh, well, there's two two exceptions really. Um, one is if you also generally, if you also have 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 an employment and you're paid under PAYE, and the amount of extra tax you have to pay on your tax return is less than twenty percent of the total tax payable for the year. So, so um, put put simply, um, if if I'm earning, you know. 80,000 and I've got um, rental income of 20,000 and, 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 and both are taxed at the same percentage, um, then uh, I wouldn't have to pay a payment on account because that 20, 20% 20 unpayable, um, the, the tax unpayable on the 20,000 rental income is just under 20%, or it's, 20, it's only 20%, it's not above 20% of the total tax, if that makes sense. Does it make sense? <laughs> um, no, no. <laughs> okay, but but gen generally, just to, to keep it simple, without uh, bamboozling people with numbers, generally, if if you if you're employed and and the vast majority of your income or the um, uh, the vast majority of your income comes from your employment and is subject to PAYE, then even if you've got residual tax of a thousand pounds. Or more to pay, you won't have to pay payments on account. So that's that's the first exception. And the other one um, is if you don't believe that your um, property profits or your untaxed income um, 
is going to be as high in the following year because as you said Vanessa they just take take the figure take the bottom line and assume it's going to be the same next year it might be lower next year um you know especially with what's happening in the in the lettings market at, at the moment with higher higher default um and um uh all, all that goes with with that and, and the costs that ensue from that um it's quite and and also with with a lot of landlords selling up as well so it's quite possible um that your uh tax uh would be lower in in, in the current year so what you can then do is is prepare an estimate um and um enter that on your tax return um and claim a lower payment on account you know calculated in the way in the same way as hmrc do but based on your estimated uh profits rather than on the same amount that you earned the previous year okay thanks rob i think just before we um conclude and round up I have some interference here, but there's a couple of questions in the chat that I wanted to just quickly touch on. Can you hear me, Rob? Yep. Okay, Fab. Just literally going from this last uh, question that we just had, somebody's asking. Um, there was a question here. Yeah, could one ask HMRC for a payment holiday for the tax due if there is cash flow issues, particularly because of Section Twenty Four eaten into finance? Rob, you're muted. Sorry, we we've lost you. No. You, yep, there you go. Uh, I think you're muted again. I think you keep pressing the mute by mistake, or someone. I don't know why it's going into mute. Was it right? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, I was. I'd been un, un, unmuted. Uh, I've been muted rather by by the host. Okay. Um, um. Sorry. Can you just repeat the question, Vanessa? It was in regards to asking HMRC for uh, a yeah. payment holiday. Mm -hmm. um, yes, um, it's um, you can you can what you can do is you can make a payment arrangement with them. Um, it's more normal to um, agree a schedule of uh, of monthly instalments um, rather than a holiday. Um, I'm not saying. Um, you wouldn't be allowed to to take a holiday. I think it, it kind of depends how long it would be and the the reasons for it. Um, because it is more normal, as I've said, just to uh, agree um, a payment schedule. And um, you could. I'm not sure if you still can. Um, but um, if if you've got a an online um, tax account, you you could do it yourself. Um, you could um, you could just go in and do it online. I'm not sure if you still can, but there's certainly a number that you can call to speak to somebody to arrange that. Um, and they're usually pretty amenable to to you know sensible suggestion because at, at the end of the day, um, they'd rather do that than um, than have you default and, um, and and all that goes with with that. And uh, you know the exchequer wants the revenue in. Um, uh, and, and wants to know that it's coming in uh, rather than, um, you know, the, the account just going into default. So uh, that's that's what, what I think um, you, you should you should do. Um, come up, work out a, a proposal and uh, and uh, give them a call and uh, put it to them or, or do it online if you still can. OK, thanks. Rob. Just last couple of questions, because we're nearly up against our time to finish at nine o'clock. Um, question here. Um, somebody's asking, are property training courses, ex the expenses incurred as part of one's personal development, are they tax, tax deductible? Because this could run into a significant number of thousands, like 5,000. <laughs> gen gen generally not. Um, so it, it, it depends. I mean, if you're already a landlord, um, then they could be allowable um if if you're new to it and you go on a training course before you start then they're not allowable um because the, the rule is that that if if you learn a totally new uh skill um in order to then commercialize then you can't claim your training costs however 
if it's a question of updating your existing knowledge, um, then it is it is claimable. Okay, um, that's, that's good to know, actually. That's, I think, Rob, we, we're running out of time for questions. I just wanted to, before we um, round down, and I'll let you just pre present your last slide. It was just to tell everybody on the Zoom that Rob has kindly offered for um, up to about 10 landlords. If you do or you would like to speak to Rob, he's offered his consultation time free for the, uh, the pleasure of you logging into the session tonight. So if you'd like to talk to Bob about anything to do with your taxes, whether it's self-assessment tax return or anything in general to do with your property tax, um, we've just dropped a link in the chat box and Rob is opening up his time completely free of charge for you to um, a maximum of 10 landlords. So please do um, drop, drop in the chat and sort of complete the quick form there and then Rob will be able to get your details and come back to you over the next couple of days. Rob, over to you just to, to round up on the presentation before I close. Okay. Um, that's better. Um, well, yeah, so thanks thanks very much everybody for, for listening and um, it's good to have a you know, good, good turnout and uh, for you to all uh, sacrifice your, your time for this. Um, so if, if you want me to help further, yes, as, as Vanessa said, um, there are a limited amount of you know, free consultations that I'm going to do. But if if you if you want to engage with me on a more um, regular um, and ongoing um, basis, um, uh, th that would be great. Um, and I think the ways I can help you to, to summarize is is is. is um, first, first, I would stress that, that you know, what, what I do and, and, and what you know, other accountants under the, the on the on the spot banner do is 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 really put the advisory side of 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 our role to the forefront so rather than just doing the books you know what what I will look at is your overall situation your family um position and and um try and look at things holistically and get a get a get a good overall result um rather than just look, looking at one aspect of your tax in in isolation uh, so it's an advisory led service and it's personalized um i don't employ anybody and and i don't employ anybody quite deliberately because i think if if you or if anyone chooses to to hire me it's because you have some kind of faith um in um or trust in 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 my my knowledge and experience and you don't want me to then um pass you on to the office junior um so that's the reason for that so it's a very personalized service um, and you know, as a as a long term landlord myself, uh, I do have a lot of um, knowledge and experience. You know, from the you know the school of hard knocks as much as anything else. Yeah, I've had my uh, my property disasters, um, as I think uh, you know a lot of us have, um, and uh, hopefully learned from it. Um, and um, you know, on the pricing side of things, it's you know. It's, not not the cheapest out there. I mean, you can go online, and uh, I think I think there's somebody out there called you know, cheaplandlords.com. Uh, no, cheap land cheapaccountants.com. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, you can decide for yourself what sort of service you may get from them. Um, but um, yeah, I work from home, as you can see in the in the background. Um, don't have expensive offices or, or staff, so um, I think prices are are pretty competitive um and uh so yeah i'll be i'll be glad to help um if uh if i can and um thank you once again and um my contact details are here i think uh vanessa you, you're going to circulate uh those yes. details and the recording is it so yes, there are a few people i saw yeah, yeah absolutely. Put, put in, in the chat yeah we'll um, circulate the details and like i said for the um for the first ten landlords, there's a there's a link in the chat box that we've put in. Um, for anybody who'd like to talk to you for some free landlord additional advice on their accounts and taxes, so that's in the chat box. So please do it that way. Although Rob these not on here, but in terms of um what we're what Rob's um, putting out for this evening for you, if you could do that, that's fabulous. And I think that brings us to a nice close. Except to say that thank you for joining. Thank you for staying to the end. Um, VA are always, are always here if you have properties in the Luton, Bedfordshire area, we're always here to service you as landlords, whether that's managing your properties or finding new tenants. And if you are on the um, on the Zoom tonight and you do have a property that you 
might want to sort of take the weight off your shoulders. We're also offering the offer to our landlords or to all landlords um, of a free management service for the first three months for any new property that we take on from you, just as a result of you being on the call tonight. So if that's of interest, um, you know, the VA details will also circulate those. Please drop us a line and um, I'll get back to you with more details with my team. So thank you for this evening. Thank you for joining. Stay tuned. The next VA expert webinar will be around the April time. We're just working on the topic and the content and the expert for that, which we're getting very excited about. And we'll be sharing more about that probably towards the end of February, March time, ready for April. So thank you, everybody. Have a lovely evening. And um, let's, hey, let's bring on the weekend tomorrow's Friday. <laughs>